coming today, I'd like to introduce you to Elizabeth Ritchie. She is an award-winning attorney and managing partner of Rabana and Ritchie PLLC. Um, she has a well-known um, pro bono work, or she does a lot of well-known uh, pro bono work, and she was named the go-to lawyer for veterans, which is personally very cool to me, by the way. Thank you for that. By the Philadelphia Inquirer, and is a presidential appointment to the Collective Service Systems Board. He has appeared on Univision, Fox and Friends, CNN, and in the New York Times. BBC News and MSNBC have both called her an immigration law expert. Richie has taught at the college level and written several scholar scholarly articles, including an entry in the Encyclopedia of the Supreme Court. Prior to practicing immigration, she studied international business, worked at the US Trade Center Mexico, and was a small, small business development volunteer in the Peace Corps in Guatemala and was the district justice when Florida was a single district before opening up her firm, Ethical Advertising, a marketing firm for attorneys. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm gonna to mute myself and just give me the sign when you want me to start your PowerPoint. Thank you okay. so much. This will be the sign, okay? Wonderful, sounds all good. Right. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm excited to be here. Are we all ready to learn about marketing ourselves and uh, working smarter? I hope so. Okay, great. Well, thank you for having me. I want to thank Nicole and Emily who have been great setting everything up. I don't admire you right now with all of these questions coming at you from all directions. Um, I'd like to thank uh, everybody who asked questions on the Whova app and um, feel free to ask questions as we go. And if I don't catch them, Nicole, go ahead and, and tell me I've missed some and we'll get to them. Um, I'm gonna mention some brands today and services that I use. No one has paid me to do that. I'm telling you what has worked for me and what I like because I like the quality, because I like the product. So keep that in mind. What I'm talking about today is real, uh, including mistakes that I've made in my practice. Um, before we get started, I'm going to ask, okay, you can go ahead, Nicole, do that first slide. Actually, second slide. Okay. Give me one moment to get my screen organized. Should be showing. So, um, Adam, you're saying smarter, not harder. Did I say work harder and not smarter? Oh, you're oh no, I was just agreed. I was just agreeing okay. with you. Okay. I'd rather was work smarter right? than harder. Was that a Freudian slip? Did I say harder and not smarter? No, no, you said it correctly. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Let's go to the next slide, Nicole. Okay. So I'm going to ask all of you to answer these questions in the chat for me. And they are, where are you physically? Where are you located? Are you currently working brick and mortar or are you working from your uh, remote location, AKA living room or dining room like I am? How many attorneys are in your practice? What type of law and do you have a slogan? So if you can go ahead and answer that on the poll, there is a prize involved. And while you all are doing that, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. So uh, I'm in Tallahassee, Florida's capital. It's I think 94 degrees today. Um, I'm working from home. My office is open with precautions. So what that means right now is that some staff are there and I go in usually before they arrive. And then I leave and I go in sometimes on weekends. Elizabeth, um, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but no one's seen a poll. Do you, did you it's want just them? these questions? Just okay. these questions right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So just we'll, in the chat. It's not a, a poll, poll, a Zoom poll, just the questions. Okay. So go ahead Great. and answer. Just okay. answer in the chat, Cassidy. Okay, yeah, Adam has answered like that. Just um, exactly. You, ha you guys have it. So where are you? Are you brick and mortar right now? or are you working remotely? How many attorneys type a law and you have a slogan? So I was mentioning um, my law partner is my husband. He's also a PAD. We did meet in law school. Um, so we're a two attorney firm. Um, I practice immigration, but more specifically, I practice uh, employment immigration. He does the deportation defense. And we do have a slogan. 
and it's practicing complex immigration throughout the nation. And I'm going to talk about the use of slogans in a moment. Okay. Is there anyone who has not yet answered those questions on the screen? If you haven't, please go ahead and do so. And I'm just looking at your answers. Let me ask, Adam, are you in your own practice or, or private practice? I am not. I'm a, I'm a bank and compliance officer at M&T Bank. Okay. How about you, Matthew Yetter? So this is this looks like a private practice, right, Matthew? Yeah, it's my own practice. Just started it in June. Okay. Very good. Nicole, next slide. All right. So Matthew, you're the winner. I wanted to make sure I gave this something in, in private practice. Um, awesome. This is Nader and Nice, uh, Niche It and Enrich It. I don't know if you're familiar with Nader. I'll talk about him a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and send that to you. And I want to make sure that, Matthew, I get your info down. In fact, um, Nicole, would you mind just copying and pasting Matthew's information into an email for me to make sure that once I log off, I don't lose that? So congratulations, Michael. I think you're really going to like that kit I'm going to send you. I loved it. Uh, we can go on um, to the next slide in one moment. I just want to talk about Nader Anise. He is an attorney. Um, I'd say he's a friend of mine. Uh, he does legal marketing. I have learned so much from Nader. Uh, like the slogan that I mentioned a moment ago, I got that idea from him. So even if you didn't win, I suggest that you go to Nader's page. Nader, N-A-D-E-R, Anise, A-N-I-S-E, dot com. I think you'll like what you see. And there's some things on there that are free and then some things uh, that you have to pay for. But look around. But Matthew will have some of the, um, the nuggets for free. Okay. So these are the objectives. These are the reasons why we're here today having this conference Zoom. We're going to talk about how to identify your market, what branding is, the professional rules and how to avoid breaking them, identifying bias and any issues uh, that I see that we need to talk about in the poll or any questions you have. So Nicole, here's your thumbs up. We can go ahead and take my face off. All right. So the objectives. Um, we don't always think of the practice of law as a business, but of course it's a business and needs to be run like a business. So I know many of you are in practice for yourself or with a firm, so you need a plan just like you were selling a product on a shelf. So in large part due to the pandemic, managing and marketing a practice has changed considerably. Um, but we still need to use some of the same tactics we would as if we were running a traditional business or traditional practice. So first step, is knowing who your client or your prospective client is. That's our first bullet. So an entertainment lawyer, for example, may be looking to attract voice talent for cartoons. Personal injury attorney might be specializing in motorcycle accidents. Two totally different markets. So you want to make sure you're marketing to the person you want to reach. So even you, the attorney, need to have a good marketing plan. Okay. Any plan has to be tailored to that audience. So an outreach intended to reach millennials should be different than what you're going to use to reach retirees. Every detail down to the methods of communication is important. Senior citizens may, may be more likely to read magazines and newspapers. Millennials may want to reach out to you via WhatsApp. I know so many clients who want to WhatsApp me all the time. And at first I was hesitant. I didn't really want to be reached all the time, but I realized that's what works for them and that's what they like. And if they don't get what they like, they may go with someone else. So you have to go with the flow. As we were saying at the beginning of the presentation, that's that who moved my cheese. And if you haven't read it, now is a good time to read it. And if you did read it, I think you need to reread it during the pandemic because it really talks about going with the flow so you don't miss out. So 
you need to realize what your clients want and like. A lot of them want to just text. I don't want clients having my regular cell phone. So I have an office cell phone that they believe is my personal cell phone and that they can text me on. And that works fine. Um, there's some other apps like Signal. I personally don't use Signal. I'm trying to get my app world narrower, but that's something that a lot of attorneys are using. And of course, there's, there's other apps out there as well. Of course, there's email, and I think that reaches across from millennials to the older people. But I even had a client today, I had sent her attachments and links in an email, and she called and she said, I don't know what you need me to do. And I said, well, it's all in the email. She didn't know how to use it. So you have to take into consideration that, while well, you may be tech savvy, but clients may not. Okay, next slide, Nicole. Let me take a look at the questions here. That's Frida, the Chihuahua, by the way. She's having her say. So what's your marketing plan? This is a business that we're talking about. You're not doing this for fun. You didn't go to school all those years just to um, answer people's questions for free. This is a business. This is your livelihood. But you may not have gone to school to be a business person. Maybe you, I, I happen to have been a business major, but some of you probably did pre-law or criminal um, political science, for example. So you want to make sure what you're doing is smart, not hard, but smart, and not overextend yourself. So to help you uh, think about these bullets that I've got up here, I'm not a bullet reader or a slide reader, so I don't want to insult anybody. You can read the slides yourselves. Um, not overextending, I just want to talk a little bit about that, especially now that we're working from home. I find myself doing it too, you know, working till 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night because I can. There's always work to be done, but it's very important right now to delineate what's work time, what's personal time, and not to fall into that trap of working all the time. The work will be there. It might still be there in the morning, whether it's 8 or 9 in the morning. So try to remember to just balance things out and not be working all the time just because you can. You would know to leave the house, to leave your office at, you know, 5, 5.30, whatever your schedule was pre-pandemic. So try to do that now, too. Think about each of these bullets. We're going to go uh, into each one in detail. Let's go to the next slide, uh, Nicole. Okay. So when you're working remotely, uh, you need to take into uh, consideration people want, especially in private practice, to pull back on their expenses. So marketing is often one of the first things that is pulled back on. Don't do that. Should it probably be marketing more now than you have in the past? So I want to talk about um, my first kind of big dive, deep dive into marketing. I had a case, you may be familiar with it, about seven years ago of a foreign-born vet. He was Cuban, and he enlisted during Vietnam. He worked for the federal government his entire career, and it wasn't until he retired and wanted to go on a cruise that he realized his entire life in this country he had been an undocumented immigrant. So I thought it was a great case. And kind of no matter how you feel about immigration, you couldn't be against this guy. He had done everything right, and the ball had been dropped on him by not just the Army, but the feds for years and years and years. He, and he had worked for several federal agencies. So um, at the time, the Trayvon Martin case was going on, and I just saw so much Trayvon Martin news. And the attorneys uh, are from Tallahassee, from the Trayvon case. You've probably heard of um, Ben Crump and his partner, or former partner, Daryl. So I, I've known them for years. So I called um, Daryl up and I said, who is doing your PR? I've got this great case and I need help with it because I really want to promote uh, the fact that there's foreign born veterans who are not legal. Not only are they not citizens, they're not, uh, they don't have any U.S. Uh, status. And that is my pro bono niche. As Nicole mentioned at the beginning, um, the, the quote from Philadelphia Inquirer, they called me the go-to lawyer for veterans. That's my, that's my pro bono niche. 
I don't charge foreign-born vets. And I have studied it a bit, and it seems like there's at least half a million foreign-born vets in this country, and thousands of them don't know that they're here undocumented. So anyway, I contacted um, Ben and Daryl's PR person, and um, he took my case pro bono and helped me promote that. But what's interesting about it is I was trying to do my own pro bono, you know, I've got some business background, not my own pro bono, my own um, PR, and I thought, you know, I can do this, so I don't need to pay anyone. This is before I knew he was going to charge me. And I contacted places like the New York Times, no response. I did a blog about it, and um, I let the Nuevo Herald, the Miami Herald in Spanish, know about it. The uh, Nuevo Herald picked it up, and it got some traction, but I really wanted it to go in bigger outlets like the New York Times. So when um, Ryan, who was the, the PR person on the Trayvon Martin case, took over, he contacted the same reporter with the New York Times who I had contacted, and she wrote him back immediately, and she flew to Tallahassee and interviewed him and took, had a ph photographer come down. And it was just interesting because it was the same person I had picked, and she ignored me, but she listened to him. So sometimes, even if we're good at doing our own marketing, um, having a professional help, maybe on an ad hoc basis, would be good. So that case kind of catapulted me into media, and I've learned a lot from it. So when I had that case, any reporter who contacted me, I saved their information. And in some cases, I've done my own marketing with uh, foreign born vets. I have one right now going on, and um, I contacted all of those same reporters that I had used in the Mario Hernandez case without having to use a PR form. And that has gotten a lot of traction. Another foreign born vet who enlisted and thought he was legal and wasn't until he went to get his driver license. He found out he has been here since 1991 undocumented. So sometimes you can do it on your own. Sometimes you may need some help. So I would suggest getting friendly with the media, especially your local media. That's a great place to start. If you have a story, don't be shy about feeding it to them. Of course, if you have your client's permission. A lot of times your local news will have profiles on their anchor and the news team and they'll tell you what kinds of boards they're on and what clubs they're in. I was on the United Way board, not because I thought of that, it was more coincidence, but I was on the United Way board with our local anchor and that kind of interaction certainly helped when I had a story. I could call her up or send her an email and say, hey, I think you might be interested. And that's free marketing, right? When they carry a story like that, even if they don't interview you, they mention, you know, this person's attorney and your name and where you are, and that's priceless. Um, Cassidy, or I don't know if you're on. Yes, I see you. Um, you had asked about cost-effective ways to market. So using your local news is excellent. I, had, uh, I have a motto, which is the no is always out there. Seek the yes. So when the Supreme Court decided on June 18th about the DACA case, which I'm not going to get into what the president has done and said since then, but on June 18th, the Supreme Court had uh, ruled that DACA basically had to go forward. So a reporter contacted me and he said, Elizabeth, I'm looking for a DACA client of yours who, you know, we can profile on the news. This is such a neat story. And he said, to be completely honest, I'm really busy right now. I have an expert on the law. I just want a client of yours. I said, okay, I, I have a few people I can think of. And then I thought about it. I said, this guy just told me he's really busy and he has another expert. Well, I'm not going to just sit back and accept that. So I contacted the, the client that I had in mind and, and I told him uh, this reporter was interested in doing the story. And of course he did do the story with him. But what I also did was I gave my own spiel about the decision. I recorded it on Zoom, and I sent it to the reporter as a, a, a link and the, uh, gave him a video, the video story. And I said, I know you said you're busy and you have an expert already. Here's my take on the decision. I've only sent this to you. I have not publicized it. Because I figured if this guy's telling me he's busy, 
and he's got another expert. He might not use it, but maybe he will. Well, guess what? He was too busy to get that other expert and he ended up using my video. Didn't cost me anything and it's consistent with that. The no was always out there, CPS. The guy told me no from the beginning. Didn't cost me any money. It took me five minutes. I did the video and it ended up being all over the news. So use the news to your advantage. Okay, a simple thing that you can do that's not necessarily so uh, forward is setting a calendar reminder. I have one for once a month on my calendar to let my bar associations, um, my college, my law school, I have all of those in one group um, on my email. And if my husband or my law partner or I have any accomplishments, I let them know once a month. It's just on my calendar. I have a, a little blurb. I have a photo already attached and I just send it out. So for example, I'll be sending to the Florida board that I gave this presentation. But I might not remember if I don't have it marked on my calendar. So that's another free way of getting some attention because you might be doing something and have a colleague see that in the bar and say, oh, yeah, I need somebody like that. I'm going to contact that person. All right, next slide, Nicole. Okay. We want to market to the right client. So my suggestion is ask yourself, who are your top five clients? And why are they your top five clients? Is it because they pay their bill on time? You like the subject matter? What's the reason? And think about how you can attract more people like that person. There's nothing wrong with saying to a, a client who you've enjoyed working with for whatever reason, how can I reach more people like you? I did that a few months ago. I had a scientist and I knew he knew a lot of people. So I said, what kind of conferences do you go to? Can I sponsor one? Can I speak at a conference? What do you suggest? And because he was happy with my services, he was more than happy to share resources with me. So not necessarily free, but easier to do it that way than hiring a firm to, to do it. And they may not even know uh, the market the way that you do or your clients do. So ask current clients and former clients who you've enjoyed working with and who were profitable, how, uh, how they found out about you, where do they socialize, what do they read, and try to take advantage of that. And it's not to say that your top five clients might not be pro bono clients. Maybe they are. And there's nothing wrong with doing more pro bono, but you need to balance it out. You still have to pay that, that mortgage and those, those loans for law school. Ask yourself which clients were most satisfied with you. Why do you think those clients were satisfied? Was it because you were, were fast, you delivered for them, because you communicated a lot? Um, you showed compassion, you spent more time with them than their previous attorney, or maybe the previous attorney always had the legal assistant talk with them and, instead of the attorney doing it. So ask yourself who your favorite clients are and why your, your clients who are your biggest fans are your biggest fans and go from there. Are you working the same hours now that you worked before the pandemic? I bet that you are, you have more free time. Could you spend that time marketing more? Could you spend that time working on cases that you enjoy? Could you spend that time doing family, family activities or reading for pleasure? So you might be able to do those things more if you're reaching the right clients. I also want you to ask yourself what the strengths and problems are that clients need solved. So a lot of times people, especially attorneys, we think we know so much and then a client comes in, this, this is what you need to do, here's how to do it. And you didn't even listen to the story. A lot of times given the client thinks that they know what their issue is and it ends up being something totally different, but they want the satisfaction of feeling like they're heard. And I'll give you an example. I had an appointment about two, two or three weeks ago with a woman and she 
uh, told me her issue and I realized immediately that um, she had been given wrong advice by immigration. I told her exactly what she needed to do. Um, I told her she could do it herself. She didn't need to hire me. Given I do charge a consultation fee, but I give the consultation fee back as a credit if I'm hired within a business day. One of the reasons I do charge is I want people to value my time. And with all due respect, if you can't afford my consultation fee, you can't afford my services. So it's also a way of vetting people. So I was so proud of myself. I answered her question. I took care of her in 12 minutes. Now my consultation fee is for a half hour consultation. Do you know that she complained that I answered her question in 12 minutes and it didn't take me a half an hour? So that's kind of the modern world, right? People want to be heard. So I realized after she complained about that, the next appointment that I had, I, I knew I was able to solve the person's issue very quickly, but I let him keep talking. I said, okay, tell me more, okay? And we went into detail and I asked questions I really didn't need the answers to, but I realized that people like to feel heard and understood and that I can do a better job of doing that by giving people just more time. They paid for that time. I'm going to give them that, that entire half hour, even if I can solve the issue in 12 minutes. Um, so you're going to have to do some, self, so, some soul searching and see how you interact with people. And I think um, you may be able to make some changes for the better. Um, think about, too, whether you can, we're talking about balance. Um, could you benefit from a virtual assistant? There are plenty of services out there, especially you're working virtually probably from home. Could you have somebody follow up on phone calls and things like that virtually? Check that out. Or could you delegate more? I bet you could delegate more. If you like doing the marketing or whatever, the bookkeeping, whatever it is, you can certainly do that. But if you, if you don't like it and want to delegate, it, delegate go ahead and do that. Um, some, uh, Nicole had asked a question along those lines. I don't know if you're on here, Nicole, but I hope that answered you. If not, please put it in the chat and I'd be happy to tell you some more. Um, I don't want you spending time, money, and energy marketing to the wrong group. Right? So I do a very high-end immigration, but I also do you know, DACA cases. I'm not going to advertise my high-end stuff in the, the classified freebies that are in the grocery store. I make sure that that type of thing goes in IEEE magazine and the DACA might go in that, in that classified. You want to make sure that um, you're using your marketing dollars wisely because groups are not interchangeable. Your markets are not interchangeable. Uh, keeping in, in mind age, like I said a moment ago. Let's see. Remember that. Um, you also want to know who do you want to avoid, right? If you've gotten some terrible clients for whatever reason from the same source, maybe you need to stop advertising with that source and go somewhere else. Um, also, when you're doing your intake, ask people to, to um, respect your time, to respect your staff. On my actual intake form, I say, you have to check off. I understand the attorney's time is valuable. I will arrive on time. I will provide the documentation she's requesting. I will respect and be courteous to her staff. If somebody reaches out to you and have, has unreasonable expectations about responding or they want a deep discount, you may want to avoid that person because down the road it will not have been worth it to have taken that case because often people like that are the ones who write bad reviews which we'll talk about. Clients need to have faith in you as a person. And to make sure they do, um, you want to make sure that they um, get what they're paying for and that they're satisfied with the result. It's easy to blame um, the delivery of a check, a settlement check on a delay by the insurance company or something like that. But it is up to you to explain to the client how the process works and why it's going to take a long time or why it's so expensive or what have you. And this also goes to rules of communication, right? If, client doesn't, if a client doesn't feel like you're explaining the process, even if you haven't done anything wrong, and if something is 
taking a long time out of your control, they should still be told why that is. So they, they will feel better and um, they'll feel better about you and probably be a, a referral source for you in the future. You have to remember that clients probably have not used an attorney or may, may not have used an attorney before interacting with you and um, everything in their case is probably new to them. So just like you were going to a doctor and having a procedure done, you're gonna to wanna to know as much as possible. So be that doctor and make that doctor analogy a lot with clients. A lot of times they'll ask, you know, what my uh, chance of success is or um, why something is so expensive. Um, or they'll say, you know, I went to, my cousin had the exact same case and they were successful. Can you do that for me? But you wouldn't ask those questions to your doctor don't ask those types of things. I, mean, I cannot guarantee chances of success. Your case is not exactly like your cousin's case. So uh, that doctor analogy can go a long way for us attorneys. Um, you have to ex set those expectations at the beginning. Be very, very clear, especially in writing about uh, what your expectations are of your clients and um, what they can expect from you. Let's go to the next slide, Nicole. Anybody familiar with four hour work week? If you haven't read this book, you should. It's not a marketing book, but I think especially now during the pandemic, we're seeing we could work a different schedule than, the, than we typically have worked. This book is excellent. I think this guy lives in Fiji or something now, literally working about four hours a week and having a successful business. I think you can do that with law. I'm certainly working uh, in a much more relaxed environment than I have been. Um, we are traveling regardless of the pandemic. We have an RV and we have wireless and I can still work and see my clients that way. And when I'm not working, I know that I have gotten my calendar um, arranged properly that no one, nothing is gonna be missed out. So I would like to make two recommendations, not uh, marketing per se, but one is this four hour work week. You can go to fourhourworkweek.com, get a free newsletter, and I think you get the first uh, 50 pages of the book for free. I'd like to recommend that. And I'd like to recommend Productive Power. If you're not already familiar with Productive Power, they are um, a consulting firm that works to help professionals, not just attorneys, and they do, um, they'll sit down with you virtually, I think it's eight sessions, and they help you manage your calendar better. If you use their tips, you'll save about an hour a day. And you also get, I think, 15 CLEs. So Productive Power is, has been working out great for me, I'd recommend it as well. Okay, next slide. Does your target market want to work with you? So on my intake, as I mentioned, I ask and demand a lot. It's a two page intake, I think in 11 point font, maybe, maybe even 10 point. But I ask clients or prospective clients, how'd you find out about me? And they almost always say a former client or the internet. Those are usually the two answers. So you wanna find out like I said earlier, where are your clients going? What conferences are they attending? What books are they reading? What magazines and newspapers? And that's where you want to market. Um, you also want to ask, what's your competition doing? Are they doing something that you can do and do better? Are they doing something that you should stay away from? Think about that. Um, I strongly recommend writing articles to your target market going to talk quickly about HARO, H-A-R-O. The website is helpareporter.com, helpareporter.com. This is free. It is a free subscription. You'll get two emails a day and they do expire. So if you don't get to them right away, just delete them. Um, especially if you're using productive power and you have less emails, you'll be able to handle this. So HARA will send out two emails every weekday. And in those emails, they will have reporters who are doing stories who are looking for 
experts or comments for articles. I respond, I read every Haro I get, and I respond probably to about two a week. And they range from many, I've done articles on um, how much legal fees should cost, ethics, all kinds of stuff. So about a year ago, I got a Haro request from the American Bar Association. They have a magazine called Experience and it's for retired lawyers. And they had asked about an uh, immigration issue if I would write an article. So I agreed. And then this spring that article came out, I have it right here. I don't know if, we, if I'm still on the screen, Nicole. If not, put me back up for a second, please. So this is the ABA Journal a magazine called Experience for Retired Attorneys. And my article Hold on just is about a second. It takes a minute to, to roll you over when you switch sure. screens. So give me just a second. Okay, you should be on the screen now. This is the ABA uh, magazine called Experience Magazine. It's for retired attorneys. So this was no, um, you know, legal scholar publication. It's one page. Okay. It's called Little Known Options May Help Immigrating Seniors. I turned it out, probably took me a few hours. I have a whole page. It's actually the, the cover theme of this particular edition, which is the April, May 2020 edition. This was from Ahara. Cost me nothing. And now I can say, oh, I was in the ABA Journal's Experience Magazine. Well, people have reached out to me, seniors, because their attorneys or their friends who were retired attorneys saw this article. So oh, I'm, I'm interested in uh, retiring in Florida. I saw your article. There you go. Free, easy. So Haro, strongly recommend it. Um, and keep in mind it's free. Haro is free to subscribe to. Um, let's talk about bad news traveling fast, right? Good news doesn't travel nearly at the same speed of bad news. So when a client does not get exactly what they want, when they want it, what do they do? They go online and write a bad review, right? So they're much less likely to post a good review if they had a great experience with you, but you should ask them, right? So when you have a success for a client, strike. I'm so happy for you that you got the settlement, that you won your case, whatever. I really appreciate a favorable review on Google or Avo. And um, you have to ask at the right time, just like with billing. If they haven't paid that bill and they won, you want to say, by the way, don't forget that bill is still outstanding because if, if weeks or months go by, you're not going to get paid. You're not going to get that favorable review. When I was writing this presentation, this particular slide, a client got, I got an approval for somebody and we were having that nice conversation. I was selling the next steps. And then I said, I really appreciate a favorable review on Avo. Great. He did it same day. So Avo is a great way to get reviews. Google as well. Uh, and there's other places, but I think those are the two main ones. And again, they're free. Speaking of reviews, check them regularly. Um, if you get a bad review, we'll talk a little bit more. I think it's in the next slide. Handle it um, as Lincoln would. In other words, don't jump on it right away and respond with, well, that you know, you lied to me at the consultation or something like that. Either don't say anything or wait, get the emotions to subside and then and then respond. Or maybe just learn from it and maybe you did make a mistake. Maybe you did do something that could have been done better and that next time it can, can be improved upon. Um, somebody asked me on Whova the most practical way to market. Um, I would say hit the ground running. When I started off, um, I had just graduated law school and um, got a $5,000 loan from an uncle off the Zippo credit card. and um, I took some cheap ads out in those classifieds that you find in the grocery store and I hit the ground running. Um, not everybody can do that, but you can certainly take advantage of some things that are free. One of the things that I did when I first started out about 20 years ago was 
I called my local public radio station. I've always enjoyed listening to NPR, and I had a, a sense of respect built in for anyone who advertised on NPR. So I called my local station, which is WFSU, I've got Florida State here, and I asked how I could get involved with the WFSU community. And um, my now friend, Frank Flynn, who was the uh, rep for WFSU said, answer the phones when we have our, our fund drive. And we'll thank you every time during the break on air that you had answered the phones and we'll use your name. So I went in a few times and I met the movers and shakers of my town who were all on air personalities. So that in and of itself was helpful, but I also um, did get that name recognition when they were um, thanking the people answering the phones. I know what you're talking about. Probably we all uh, turn the radio to another station during the fun drive, but you know what I'm talking about when you have the, um, the people on the air thanking the, the people who are manning and womaning the phones. So that was great. And then as I got um, further in my career, then I ended up being the person answering uh, on air and underwriting. And you would be shocked how many people tell me that they chose me over someone else because I underwrite on public radio and public television, and they respect that. So if you're in a position to sponsor public radio and TV, I strongly recommend that you do it. Um, this year, it's a little different. Public radio and TV are having pre-recorded uh, personalities, uh, which we'll still be doing. But um, we have to go with the flow, as I said. Let's do the next slide, Nicole. Okay, just give me a moment to get you back on the slide page. You should be seen market to your target directly. Keep, keep going. It should be the 11th slide with a bullseye. That's it. It says market to target okay. directly. It, it took a second. Here we are. There we go. Okay, now go to the next one. Go to, it should have, um, there we are, thank you. So hopefully somebody on this call recognizes this slide. I tried to go through um, everybody's profiles on the Whova app in anticipation of this slide. So we're talking about websites. Uh, a website should not be static, it's a dynamic, uh, dynamic thing. It's not a business card. Um, it should be up to date. It should have photos and videos. Um, I do use services that are provided by lawyers.com, but I will say I do not use their websites. I find them to look canned and look like everybody else's, um, but they are very helpful with search engine optimization. So uh, lawyers.com is great for that. Um, I strongly recommend an FAQ on your web page in the format of questions. For example, am I eligible for unemployment? Because that's what people are using when they're looking up things about that, that concern them. So uh, have an FAQ, have a feed. Uh, for example, I'm, I do immigration. There's an immigration law feed that I can just tag to my website and it has uh, news stories that go out. So it, it seems fresh and I don't have to do that much work to, um, to have to manage that. And that is also free. So these are two uh, websites that I liked, one of which is from a PAD member. This, oops, take control of your life. I thought that was really neat. Are you on here? Um, I'm trying to think whose website that was from Texas, helping Texans recover their losses after an insurance claim. That's a great slogan. And um, I thought the website was great. So that's an example. Here we've got take back control of your future, another great slogan. Um, these, these are things that people are gonna see just right out of, the, out of the gate. And you wanna make sure that your website makes a good impression. Um, you have to have a niche and it has to be clear on your website what that niche is. Again, it's not immigration entirely, it's um, you know, employment immigration or even uh, international performers, something even more narrow than that. 
I think your website should have videos on it. I do videos regularly on YouTube. You know, you'll probably laugh. The quality is not great. Clients are not looking for a Hollywood produced video. They want to know that you're a real person and uh, that you know what you're talking about. And YouTubes can convey that. Um, I read on LinkedIn recently a quote by a marketer who said, if you wait to release your video until it's perfect, you waited too long. And I think that's true. It, you're never going to be 100% happy with how you look or how you sound or the graphics. Just do it and get it out there. We're not in the business of selling movies. We're in the business of law. So if you can uh, remember that, you'll feel better and I think be more comfortable releasing YouTubes. They're a great way to connect with um, clients, prospective clients, and um, they're easy to digest. I like to do them because I can send a client who has asked me a question I've already answered a link to a video and say, watch this video and then let me know if you have any questions. And I think they respect that. Um, I'm not charging them for something that they can just watch me have already said on YouTube. On your site, I think it's a great idea to let people know who you, the person, are. Not so much as the attorney. I know you've got things that you've written and awards you won, and that's all great. But tell them who you are as a person. Do you have a family photo you'd like to include? And I realize that may not be appropriate in all contexts, but do you have a hobby? Is there something that you can tell your prospective clients about that they may like that may help um, help them relate to you? My daughter did a history fair project last year on the tenements and came in second in the county. And uh, she and her friend uh, did a video and there's footage of them receiving the award, but there's a video about the tenements and immigration in this country. And I put it up on my webpage. I want people to know I live my values. Um, I'm teaching the things that I uh, say I believe in. And uh, people can see that when they visit my site. And, and they've told me that they like that. Google, of course, has that search console. That's with the images in the upper right. That's free. And it can help you with your SEO strategy. Um, I'm not going to try to sell anything Google. You all know that you can look that up very easily and, and use that their free services. Last point on websites is ADA compliance. There's some great resources out there. Um, DigiPro Media is a company that I like. That's D-I-G-I Pro Media dot com. I have met them in person and I think that they're excellent. Um, I don't know if you heard about the Beyonce case about a year ago that somebody was trying to buy a sweatshirt off of her webpage. Uh, the person uh, was visually impaired, could not make the purchase because um, of how the website was designed and they sued Beyonce for I don't know how many millions of dollars. So. Um, that's going to become an issue more and more, uh, lack of ADA compliance on websites. So you want to make sure that your website is compliant. Let's go to the next slide, Nicole. Okay, using social media. Um, again, it varies on cultural, political, um, different factors about who's using what, but um, I'm not going to bore you with all of the options. I know you know what they are. Um, I just want to talk about some niche things that you might be able to do on social media. So I'm a Girl Scout leader, and um, I, I developed a patch that can work for Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts about knowing your immigrant heritage. And I put the patch steps up on Pinterest. And I said, anybody who completes the patch the steps, let me know, and I'll send you the patch. And we just bought patches. I think they cost 50 or 75 cents each and we've been sending them out to troops who complete the steps. It's not going to directly result in business, but it's part of that you know, service to the community. And again, living my values as an attorney. Um, you'll see here on this page, you've got my AVO badge. I've got a 10 rating. That's relatively easy to get. You can ask your PAD friends, your colleagues to give you reviews, give other people reviews, um, AVO, which is owned by um, Lawyers.com, which is also part of that Martindale 
umbrella. Um, you can ask for, for reviews, but you can also write legal guides, which is similar to the YouTube, but just in writing. So if you write how to do, how to collect unemployment, for example, you write a, a short legal guide when a client says, oh, how can I collect un unemployment? You could say, well, instead of paying for a consultation or uh, instead of um, you know, meeting with me, check this out. And if you still have questions, let me know. And I think people will appreciate that. The more legal guides you write and the more reactions you get, you know, the higher your ranking. But you can get a 10, I would say, in about six months if you put the effort in. Um, a bit over. Okay. Somebody's saying that they're over Avo if you don't pay the advertise other lawyers and uh huh. Yeah. So it is true that um, there is a, a profit element there. But uh, if you do get a bad review, for example, on Avo and it turns out that it's not legitimate, they will take it down whether you subscribe or not. And you know, I don't. I didn't love it at first, Avo. It was something I had to monitor and do. But it's a reality that that's where people are going to find out about attorneys. So it is something that people, I think, are going to have to um, have to have to manage. Um, if you're going to commit to posting on your page or other pages, you have to be prepared to monitor it. I do not have the time to do that monitoring, and I did take Facebook reviews off from my firm page. I just thought it was too much, and my personality doesn't allow for me to not check that constantly, and I found it to be a time waster. Yelp, I don't like for what I'm trying to do. That's not who I'm trying to appeal to. So I don't use Yelp. Some attorneys do. Um, personal choice. Uh, let's see. You can do Facebook Lives very easily as a promotion, but you do have to be careful that Facebook monitors um, what you're promoting, and they may not let you promote it. Immigration is such a hot topic right now. Almost everything that I'm trying to promote, uh, Facebook is not allowing, just so you know. You can, of course, work with the Phi Alpha Delta page. There's a ton of pages out there that you can network in. Here's Quarantined Lady Lawyers up on the screen. That's one of the ones that I'm in. I like Boss Ladies Esquire. That's another one. It's great for camaraderie and referrals. I had posted on Boss Lady Esquire about a year ago. I needed an entertainment lawyer for something. And somebody wrote me back right away. She gave me a free consultation. I was very satisfied. But guess what? She ended up hiring me for something. So it's not always uh, what you need um, as far as you know, new clients. You may, you may have a legal need yourself. And um, being in these kinds of groups can certainly help with that. Um, I don't need to promote the benefits of, of Twitter and stuff like that. I think you know what they are, but just beware that these kinds of things are changing over time and you need to be careful about um, the algorithms that are being used and who is watching what. Uh, of course, what you say, you wanna make sure that it's in compliance with the bar rules. I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Um, whatever you do, uh, be genuine and remember, of course, just like you would tell your, your kids or your students that it can come back at you if it is, uh, if it's on, on the internet. Okay. Um, if you're posting the same comment to different outlets, that can appear disingenuous. I don't recommend doing that. Um, I might post something one way on my personal Facebook page, all of emojis and then do it in a more professional way, for example, on my law page, um, my Facebook page for the office. I do wanna recommend things like Rotary Clubs and this law fraternity is great for networking. Emma on, Ho on Whova asked about that. Um, networking for solo practitioners. Networking can take time. It's a little awkward right now during the pandemic, but I hope that uh, you all are going to be attending the online networking session tonight. Um, it's great because, you know, you can be in different states and you can still give and get referrals. So please don't stop networking, even though we're uh, in a pandemic. I realize that we're going to run out of time. I have a lot more to talk about. So I'm going to try to shorten it up and then we can get to some questions. People are going to want a re reason to need you. So when you're networking, it's not that you just want new clients and you're promoting yourself. 
people want to talk about themselves too. So when you go to these events, whether they're online in person, remember that people uh, want to sell, sell you their service or their product. And if you engage them, uh, chances are they're going to use you. I'm going to give you an example. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, I wanted my bike repaired. And I asked on Facebook if anybody knew of somebody who could fix it at my house. I didn't want to take it anywhere. And a, not really a friend, an acquaintance, but a Facebook friend responded. He came to my house. He fixed my and my husband's bikes. And he is a financial planner. And guess what? I ended up hiring him to be my financial planner because I wasn't satisfied with the one that I had. Well, had he not made that offer, that genuine offer, he was not planning on getting me as a customer as a result of fixing my bike, but that's how life works, right? Okay, so I want to practice a little bit of networking right now. If we're not already Facebook friends, try to find me on Facebook and LinkedIn. I think I found everybody who I could as of last night that I saw was on here from the Whova app. So who knows, maybe we can refer each other some work. In the meantime, Nicole, let's do that next slide. What do you do when you get a bad review, the dreaded bad review? And yeah, you know, there's people who, like I said, if they don't get exactly what they want when they want it, they're gonna go online and complain. That's why it's very important to ask for that good review while people are still happy. How to monitor this, if you don't already have a Google alert on yourself, do one. You can set it up with your name or a derivation and a derivation of your name and your firm name. And you'll get uh, an email when your name is uh, mentioned online. I don't know if you've heard of the Blake versus Anne Marie Giustabelli case. It's a Florida case. An attorney, she did family law. And she represented the wife who went online and said that she had changed her fee agreement four times and didn't tell them and was dishonest and all of this stuff that was not true. And in fact, the ex-husband joined the wife in bashing the attorney and none of what the people said about her was true. And she sued them and she won. And I think the uh, award was something like $350,000. And the reason is because what the people were saying was, was false. So if you do get a bad review, that's false. I suggest mentioning this case or your state's version of it. I had somebody say something online a year or two ago that was completely untrue about me. And I sent her this case and I said, this attorney won $350,000 against her former client for making false claims. I'd appreciate it if you'd remove your false claim. Well, guess what? She took it down because she knew it was false. So that's a good case to be familiar with or your state's version of it. As I said earlier, you handle these kinds of things like Lincoln would. Don't re respond right away. Some things don't need a response. If something looks totally ridiculous in a review, like she answered my question in 12 minutes and not a half an hour, leave that up there. Let other people see how completely ridiculous that is. Um, and if somebody does say something negative about you that is true, learn from it. Here's a great Henry Ford quote. The only real mistake is the one from which we learn nothing. I have had people say, your online presence, this was years ago, but your online presence isn't impressive. Well, guess what? I went on there, I published articles, I updated my AVO, things like that, and I improved it, I learned from it. And I think that's the most important lesson that you can uh, have from a bad review. Consider following up, not necessarily every review requires an answer, but certainly don't do something hasty, maybe wait a day or so. And um, you can ask to take it offline, be professional, and see if you can uh, improve the situation. But I don't want you to be distraught if you do get a bad review. I think clients find it disingenuous when somebody has all fives or all tens or whatever the review system is. Um, it looks fake. So having a review that's not perfect is not going to kill you, and it makes you look like a real person. Let's go to the next slide. Networking during a pandemic. So keep doing it. Go tonight to the StanCon social at 8 o'clock. I, I recommend it. Um, do those 
Boss Lady Esquire, or those Rotary Club meetings, they're online too now, Rotary. And um, you're going to have to go with the flow during this pandemic. I don't think things are going to go back to how they were anytime soon. So if your practice relies on referrals, you're going to have to be creative in how you're going to get those referrals. Um, I started a podcast recently, again, free. I use Anchor, A-N-C-H-O-R, the Anchor app. And what I'm doing is interviewing immigrants and talking about their immigrant experience in the first half of the show. And then the second half, uh, talking about the legal issues brought up. Again, if a client or potential client asks you a question, you might say, hey, read this podcast episode first. If you still have questions, let me know. And I think, uh, I think that shows that you're going with the flow and, and changing with the times. So that's, that's something that you might be able to do. Again, it's free. Um, but Genuine involvement is key, whether you're networking online or in person, keep that in mind. Um, don't be self-serving. If you're on pad, and I've done it, you've probably seen it too. Some of my posts, I realize in retrospect, were self-serving. I did one on Boss Lady about an award I won for my pro bono. They wouldn't let me do it because they said it wasn't the intention of the group. And I realized, you know what? They're right. Uh, it's not all about you, you have to congratulate coworkers, share news stories and things like that so people know, you know, that you're real. Let's go, Nicole, to na uh, mentoring, the next slide. Okay. One of my favorite authors, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, advice is like snow, the softer it falls, the longer it dwells upon, and the deeper it sinks into the mind. So mentoring is an important part of law. Where would you be today if you didn't have a mentor when you were in law school or when you were younger? And think about giving back. I think that's part of being in a law fraternity. How can you help serve your law school? How can you help serve the profession in your community? Um, you know, if somebody asks to pick your brain, especially now if you have more time, agree. You're not committing to a lifelong relationship of mentorship, but maybe a half an hour phone call. Um, you can mentor through the pad page. The ABA has a great article about it. I will, um, I will get you a link to that. Um, but mentoring is very important. It's not about just getting referrals all the time in new business. It is about getting back to your community and your profession. Let's do the next slide, Nicole. Follow the rules. So we've talked about uh, communication 1.4 especially with regard to letting clients know what to expect. Um, of course, you've got to be competent in what you're doing. Somebody had asked me on the app, what about um, when you're new in an area of law, how, do you, how, how can you show competence? Read, all the, uh, read the articles, do the CLEs. There's so many free ones right now anyway. Get a mentor, just like anybody else. You want to hit the ground running and do a deep dive into the subject matter so you can... Um, become a, an expert. What about confidentiality, especially in light of social media? If you're going to post a win on Facebook or social media in general, you want to make sure that it's okay with the client. It may be better to ask the client to post it and tag you so you know that the client is comfortable with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. We won a big asylum case for a uh, a lesbian woman from El Salvador last year, and we were standing out in front of the courthouse in San Francisco, and uh, she's the one who took the picture, and she's the one who posted it and tagged us, not the other way around, because you don't want somebody, after all, to say, hey, you revealed my confidences by, by posting whatever that was. And sometimes, even if you don't get into detail, but if the case is so unique, it's going to be obvious who the client was, don't do that. Okay. Um, Sarah had asked, what are your ethical responsibilities in serving clients who are disabled who may have a language barrier? So that goes to competence. Um, and I think you're talking about physical disabilities. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of rules on um, mental capacity. But if you talk about physical abilities, um, you're, there's a great article uh, from UC Davis. I'll get you the link to that. But as far as language, um, even if you speak a second language, if you're not completely fluent, I would not suggest uh, entering pleas or uh, drafting up con uh, contracts without a professional translator. It's not the translator's job, though, to 
um, do your homework for you. Their job is to just translate what's being said, not add to it or take away from it. So just be very careful. Even if you are fluent, um, if it's not your native language, you may want to get a professional translator and have them there when you're entering into um, <clears throat> excuse me, agreements because uh, competency can come and bite you at that point. Bridging cultural gaps, that's your responsibility as the attorney. It's not the interpreter's responsibility. They might be able to help you, but um, if you can be aware of cultural factors uh, to adjust your communication, I suggest you do so. Um, let's see, advertising, I think we've gone into enough detail about that. Let's talk about contact with prospective clients. So if you are answering questions online, you need to be careful about um, the impression that the person is under whose question you're answering. If they think that you're a client or if you're doing mass mailings, for example, including emails, if, um, if you are contacting someone who's already represented, that's a no-no. Uh, make sure that you're complying with your own bar rules, probably modeled off of the um, rule 7.3 model rule. Let's go to 17, Nicole, the next slide. You want to avoid that inadvertent uh, client relationship. I have this happen all the time. I'm sure you do. So you have a client who has a whole new issue. What do I do about such and such? This happened. <clears throat> My sister got arrested. That's not what they hired you for. And you need to be clear that your representation is XYZ, whatever you've agreed to in writing. Uh, online commentary, same thing. If you're answering questions on Avo, have your own disclaimer. Have a disclaimer at the bottom of your email. Um, I got this the other day from somebody, what's in red, nothing in this email should be construed as a legal opinion. You have to protect yourself because at the end of the day, somebody doesn't get the result that they want. They're going to point their finger at you and say, well, you, you told me such and such, even though it was in a casual conversation, you were, you were not in your mind giving them advice as an attorney, but that's how they interpret it. So be very careful about that. Um, be very careful how your retainer is written, what it says the scope of your work is going to be. Um, if they believe that you're representing them, uh, they may hold you to that, and that can result in, in discipline that you want to avoid. Um, some attorneys, I don't do this, but some attorneys have a box in their email uh, that the reader has to check to show that they understand that it is just commentary and uh, does not constitute representation. I often just tell people, you know, my malpractice insurance carrier doesn't allow, allow me to do that. And that's something hard to argue with, especially if I don't want to take it because, oh, my malpractice carrier uh, doesn't allow for that. And they don't know any differently. <clears throat> Let's go to the next slide. We're going to talk briefly about branding. What is your brand? Are you a personal injury attorney or are you a semi-truck uh, attorney, an accident attorney? Do you do family law or do you, um, do you do divorces for men only kind of thing? So if you do deportation, do you do deportation for stateless individuals? You need to kind of be more specific. When you meet someone for the first time and they say, what do you do? Do you say, oh, I'm an attorney? Or do you say, I help people stay in their homes? I protect people from dangerous products, for example. You see where I'm going with this. So I practice immigration, but I mostly concentrate on extraordinary and exceptional aliens. People call that the Einstein visa. So that's my niche, uh, aside from my pro bono niche for uh, foreign-born vets. My husband has a different area of practice. He does the deportation defense. So to include all of that, our slogan, as I said, is practicing complex immigration across the nation. It rhymes. It shows that we do sophisticated work and that we're not geographically limited. That's something I learned from Nader Anise, who I mentioned at the beginning. Um, I just received notice of publication confirmation from the trademark office for that. That's how serious I am about slogans. We are getting that trademarked. Um, I have a picture of a bus here. That's our bus. That's an RV that we converted into a mobile office. And we, mostly pre-pandemic, we're going around and doing seminars. We're going to churches, civic groups, 
in giving presentations out of the mobile office. I think it differentiates us from our competition that we are willing to go to you. We will take your passport style photos. We will make the photocopies for you at your church, at your club. And it, I think it shows people in a very obvious way that we are different. So that's part of our brand. Um, so think about that when you're meeting someone from the first time. What's your brand? How do you want them to remember you just as, quote, an attorney or somebody who does something unique? Let's get into bias, Nicole. Next slide. This is a hot topic, especially in Florida. In fact, it's a su subject uh, CLE credit worthy. Um, so if you, from your upbringing or your religion or your life experience, um, you have perceptions of things, and those are gonna contribute to your outlook. Um, implicit bias can be a variety of prejudices, whether they're unconscious or automatic. And um, it can affect how you relate to clients, your assumptions. We tend to be more conscious of our negative biases than our positive ones. Um, but positive biases may be present and could be problematic. So the objective here is to be able to recognize what your biases are and deal with them. Um, identifying if you're prejudging someone. I'm talking about, um, for example, if someone feels like if you feel that because someone's from a particular culture, they may not pay on time or they're going to be late or perhaps not truthful, these are prejudgments that can hurt the attorney client relationships. So you have to be aware of them. You should also be um, aware about discussing your uh, biases and your perceptions with the, the, that the client might have of you. What does your office look like? Do you have decorations in your office that might be offensive to someone? Do you, uh, for example, if you are a big Trump supporter and you're doing immigration, what's your client going to think of that? What's your client going to think if you, um, you're a Muslim and you're representing somebody who is Christian, you have, you know, different uh, decorations up in your office? How is that going to be perceived? So aesthetically is one thing, but what, what's the client going to internalize about that? And um, that can affect your relationship. So be very careful about what's up in your office and what could imply meaning, even if it doesn't mean anything. If the client thinks it does, then it does. Um, so be aware of the different norms. Um, as attorneys, obviously, we're more educated often than our clients. And um, there may be uh, a sense of, um, you know, it, it, that they don't know as much as, as the person that they're talking to and they may feel awkward about that. So you wanna to try to make them comfortable and be aware that if they have a different culture or a different background, that that is not going to affect how you represent them. Um, when we can work through these biases, we can deliver a better service to our client and uh, we need to do so with a good level of cultural competence. That's very important. There's a lot of good resources. I will send them to Nicole and if you don't mind, Nicole, to go and um, email those out when we're done. Uh, I'll give you a couple of good links. So let's go to the next slide, and we'll do a little quick recap. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, we'll do a recap. Um, basically, th this is my word cloud of the things that we talked about. Um, working with the media, using social, uh, social media as a free tool that has to be monitored, Maybe working with a PR firm on an ad hoc basis if, if you do have a big case and don't have the time or the know-how. But if you can manage it yourself and you're smart about your, your media interaction, you can certainly do that. Working smarter rather than harder, that four-hour work week and productivity, power of productivity that I mentioned that helps you manage your emails, gets you an hour more a day targeting a specific market, knowing who you want to be your client, asking for reviews when the client is happy, being genuine in your interactions and your potential referral sources, not responding immediately to a negative review, doing meaningful networking, mentoring, following the ethical rules, 
avoiding bias and having a brand. Come up with a slogan for yourself that you want people to remember after you meet them for the first time. So those are my recap words from what we just talked about. We're going to do a Q&A. Don't get log off just yet. I do have just a funny video after the Q&A if you don't mind staying around for that. Oh, you want me to switch it back to you? Yeah, switch it back to me and we'll do, um, we'll do a live Q&A. Um, let me take a look at the questions. And I am um, allowing people to unmute themselves if they'd okay. like. Um, if for some reason you're not able to unmute, please put your question um, in the chat. Okay. I'm looking at the comments and I don't, that's a big bark for a chihuahua. Let me bring her up here. It's going to rain, so she's very scared and she's, here she is. She's on my lap. This is Frida. Frida. Hi, Frida. We know you're scared, but you got to get up. <laughs> Any questions, folks, about anything that I've talked about? Three ways to market yourself. You have to be assertive in this market with the media. Go ahead and give those stories, of course, with your client's permission. I think you could, uh, you'll see the power of that. It's really incredible. And remember, the no is always out there. You have to seek the yes. What's the best way to get in touch with the, um, a media outlet? This is Matthew, uh, South Sound. So are we talking about national media or uh, your local media? Just local, yeah. Okay, so for local, I would go on their webpage. They've probably got their anchors' emails up and the, um, the team's emails up and contact them that way. Um, give them a, a, a little blurb. This is going to be an interesting story for your audience. Not, I have this great story that, you know, you want to make it something that's interesting for them. The national ones are harder to deal with because like I said, I had, I've messaged plenty of national people. Usually those guys need to hear from someone they're already familiar with. So that's mm -hmm. where you might um, use a PR firm, even if it's just that one, uh, one case at a time. But local, I think, they need stories. There's, there's not always a lot of news going on, and um, that's why you see stories so often. Something happened in another state. Why are they showing that? Because there's no local news. That's why they're showing that. So if you can make something interesting to their um, viewers, they'll carry it and make it easy for them. Like I said, you know, I did that video. The guy told me he was busy, but he had another extra. Oh, okay. I went and did the video. He played it anyway. Make it do you easy. ever do press releases? I do press releases uh, with the PR firm that I am using. I've got a big case right now of another foreign-born vet who uh, found out he's been here, you know, undocumented for almost 30 years. Um, I don't love them. I don't think that they're really that effective. The program that we use is called Cision. I don't know if you've heard of Cision. You don't have to be in PR to use Cision but it is an expensive subscription. So one advantage of using a PR firm is that they're already paying that subscription and they're just charging you a tiny fraction of the subscription fee. What kind of law do you practice? Uh, family law mostly and then some personal injury. Okay. So there's lots of possibilities in there for unique cases. But um, if you have the client's permission, go ahead and ask tell the media about it and see if they're interested in covering something everybody all attorneys have unique cases you know people don't really realize what well, what we do there is a lot of novelty in the kinds of cases that we have i'd be happy to talk to you more offline if you like maybe um if you have some ideas you want to talk about i haven't thought about it too much yet okay well you're the one who, who won the, the kit right yeah okay so listen to the kit and then we can talk Okay, sounds good, thanks. Right. I want to make sure I have your address, Matthew. Okay. okay. Any other questions or comments? So how, how do you recommend sort of this same kind of idea of contacting uh, reporters and whatnot if you're not in litigation? It's a little hard to, if you're not a what? If you're not in litigation. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing litigation and I, I do it all the time. So. If I have something that's even potentially unique or uh, a possible local interest, I'm going to let that, the media know. They know me very well. I have uh, different files in my office with you know, public radio, television, local news, state news. 
and I'll say, I've got this neat issue. I think you might be interested. You have to personalize it. You know, you say, hey, Cassie, good afternoon. I've got this neat story. I think you might be interested in giving the details. Not this mass email to 20 reporters because they also want to have a unique story. They don't, they may not cover it if they think uh, their competition is covering it too. So a personalized message to that reporter or, or a phone call if you have their number. They, they may not answer. Um, but a lot of times they're using a, a cell that they want people to send tips to. So you'd be surprised in their willingness to, uh, to take the story, just as long as it doesn't seem so self-serving, you know, that, that there's gotta be a benefit for their audience in it. What kind of law do you do? Um, business, uh, uh, business and uh, corporate consulting mostly. Um, I opened my own practice literally weeks ago. Uh, Congratulations. So, thank you, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, I've been, I've got handful of clients only, but that's kind of what I'm at. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's sort of Are stuff. they local? Uh, all but one. One is in Macau. <laughs> okay. So public, uh, radio and public television might be good for you. Um, it sounds like that's the kind of, uh, audience who should be reaching and it's, not that expensive so that might be something to look into and if it's not in your budget perhaps that answering the phone calls or um, volunteering at your local public radio and television station good people are watching tv more than ever so public tv may be the way to go for you okay so not so much as a news story but just as a top of mind because sometimes you're you're hammering away at uh, a top yeah no i our local public television actually covers the entirety of North America, uh, Northern California, so that might be a really good one, actually. Yeah, see if you can get on that. And you know, there are shows that are specific to to your audience. You don't want to be on Sesame Street. Well, it's not on public television anymore, anyway. But you know, you want to make sure that the the programs that they are offering to you are what your clients are watching. Don't marketplace that sort of thing is a particularly good choice, probably. <laughs> No, I, I hear what you're coming from. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Let me see if I see anything in the chat. Nothing in the chat. Nicole, anything I should cover that we haven't already? There I was going again, yapping without being off mute. Um, I love Zoom, but I always forget to click those buttons. Yes, I know. And then we're like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I checked chat. It looks like we covered all the questions. Um, I know you had a video you wanted to play. Did you want to, do you want that to be an it, outro or? <laughs> no, no, guys, this is just a fun video. We're talking about marketing and advertising. This is not my suggestion for your next ad campaign, but just a quick laugh. Okay. So go, if you want to stay on and watch the video, great. Go, please go ahead and click, uh, click the video, Nicole. Thanks everybody. I appreciate your time. I don't have the video, Elizabeth. You Is don't. it in the PowerPoint? It's, yes, it's. Ah, okay. Give me a second. Let me get over to that. I apologize. I didn't realize it was the next in here. One. Ah, there we go. I'm sorry. I missed that. Just for fun. Let me get Zoom to do the right thing and play it via well, Zoom. I'm going to put some of these links in the chat that I promised. to get the window open it's not wanting to play across okay almost there Do you need help with the law? I just want to see my kids. Avocado, 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 avocado. Are you hungry for superfood? Internet says avocados are like so good for you. Avocado, 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 avocado. Why not solve both problems at once? At Abogado Avocado, we provide discounted lawyer service and complimentary avocados just for stopping by. At Abogado Avocado, we do it all. Criminal, civil, guacamole, contract, even salsa. Just listen to this testimonial from a real-life customer. 
Yeah, uh, avocado, avocado to the camera, I'd take it right away. Um, I really didn't want the avocado, but I... Avocado, avocado! Avocados are great and sad. Thanks to Avocado Avocado, my drug charges were dropped. He tried offering me some guacamole, but I'm allergic to avocado. Avocado means lawyer. When it comes to the law, I, Avocado Avocado, am firm, but not too firm. Avocado 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 Avocado. My wife and I had it all. I was a abogado and she was an heiress to her family's avocado farm. All that changed last year when she died, leaving me the farm, severing our family and forcing me to become avocado, avocado. This case is not ready yet. Avocado, 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 avocado. So come on out to Avocado, Avocado. The most delicious law service on either side of the border. I've seen that video like six times and it still makes me laugh. It's <laughs> awesome. Okay. Thank you so much for, for this time, Elizabeth. It's greatly appreciated. Um